With me now is the CEO of New Gold, Randall Oliphant. Thank you so much for being with us at Gold Stock Analyst Day. Yeah, it's nice to be with you again. Now I know you'll be speaking to investors in a little bit, so I won't keep you for too long. But I was excited to talk to you because you know you hear the name New Gold, you think, well, here's a company focused on gold. But there's another metal that's really emerged as the star player for you guys. So let's talk about your new Afton mine in British Columbia. Uh, which has been offering you uh, quite a cost advantage from producing twice as much copper than gold, is that correct? Yeah, in value it does. Yeah, so let's talk about how um, that's been helping you. Well, you know, getting a lot of copper uh, in addition to gold gives us a huge, what we call, byproduct credit. So if you look at uh, its cost, it's actually negative, meaning the copper yeah. more than pays all the costs at the mine. Yeah, so you actually have reported negative all in sustaining costs. Yeah, which is terrific for our shareholders. Uh, but if you look at it as a copper and a gold mine and do co-product right. accounting as they call it, it's about a dollar a pound of copper but only $400 an ounce gold. So uh, both metals more than pay all the costs and you can get the other one for free. Now is that something rare in the mining industry to see that? Well it's rare to see uh, a mine that's so low cost. Uh, sort of allocating byproducts against your cost is quite standard not only in the gold industry but in copper like Freeport's Grassberg property mm -hmm. for instance produces about two million ounces of gold a year which makes it one of the lowest cost copper mines so it's nice to have these sort of bonus revenue streams when you're really trying to go after your primary primary metal. Randall, New Gold has operating mines in Canada, US, Mexico and as well as Australia so with all the volatility we're seeing, um, I guess, in the Forex markets and the strong U.S. dollar, how do you position yourselves or by dealing with all these different jurisdictions? Yeah, well, there's certain uh, elements that are the same in all of them and some of them that are different. Uh, the thing that's the same is they're all politically secure places. Uh, right. So we like operating there. Uh, the other thing that's interesting is uh, Canada, Mexico and Australia are largely resource-oriented currencies. So what we've seen is the value of those currencies against the US dollar devalued significantly over the course of the past year. But we also see an interesting correlation to the copper you were just speaking about. Because as the copper price comes down, generally commodity currencies tend to devalue. So by those currencies going down, our operating costs have gone down quite a bit, but the amount of copper byproduct credit that we get is also less. But the two largely offset each other. I'm guessing that Mexico would cause the greatest number of challenges of those jurisdictions with the recent you know kidnapping headlines we've seen in the country and violence well it's very location specific in Mexico so the the area where we are we haven't had any of those incidents uh, the biggest problem that we have in Mexico and all gold miners have is new taxes being put on on gold mines but our Cerro San Pedro mine that's there is actually in its last year of active mining and then it'll go into residual leach so our focus is increasingly towards Canada where over 80% of our reserves are. Randall, let's talk about uh, New Gold's uh, results which just came out. Now, although total cash and all in sustaining costs remain among the lowest industry in the industry, there are impairment issues that caused a net loss this past year. Tell us about the impairments at Blackwater and what steps the company plans to take. Yeah, well at Blackwater what we decided to do was to build it after we build our Rainy River project. So, sort of the values of those cash flows are pushed out further. We also took a more conservative view of how much value do we assign to the exploration potential. So we just thought in this environment we're better to have a conservative number on our balance sheet uh, address that and that'll just make it that much more profitable going forward. Now you received the permits for Rainy River, when can we expect production? Well we're going to start building it in the, in the coming weeks which is really exciting for okay. us uh, and it'll start producing gold in about the middle of 2017. And how much gold do you think you're sitting on there? Well, right now there's about 4 million ounces in reserves okay. and it'll produce about 325,000 ounces a year. So for a company that produces 400,000 ounces uh, this year, it's a huge deal for us because it'll, it's about twice the mine life of our current mines. It's three quarters of the production that we get from four operations today. So it'll be a new flagship property for us. Now Randall, besides being the CEO of New Gold, uh, you also sit on the board of the World Gold Council. So you really have a global view of, of gold, not just on the mining side, but the fundamentals of gold. How do you see uh, the price of gold uh, right now, currently? Well, you know, in fact, I'm chairing the World Gold Council meetings this afternoon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we love the fundamentals in the gold market. Uh, people tend to focus on the US dollar price, but actually the price yeah. has been doing remarkably well in all the currencies that have been devaluing against the US dollar. 
And because about 55% of all gold is consumed in just India and China, um, it's really very much an Eastern business. And what, what gives us some confidence is that they're real consumers. They're not like a hedge fund that buys gold and then sells it six months later. It goes into jewelry, it goes into savings. There's uh, banks with gold savings accounts there, all sorts of gold accumulation plans. So having the two most populous countries in the world who are urbanizing and have growing economies loving our product uh, gives me a lot of confidence. And we recently saw India surpass uh, China. Does that uh, signify anything to you? Does it have anything to do with the, uh, the import restrictions that were lessened this year? Yeah, well, the import restrictions were lessened. And the reason why they put them on is uh, India was running a big current account deficit. Mm -hmm. uh, and the decline in the oil prices had a huge impact. In fact, I was reading something that said India will benefit more than any other country in the world from lower oil prices. So what the government did to try and address the current account deficit is they put an import duty on, on gold because they already have a trillion dollars worth of gold in the country and they need the oil to continue to operate. Mm -hmm. But now that the oil prices come down, their current account deficit has, has shrunk and now they're talking about easing the restrictions and the import duties on gold, which will just make our number one customer that much bigger a customer. Interesting. All right. Well, Randall, good, good thoughts from you. And I guess from a mining standpoint, do you think the sentiment's more upbeat uh, compared to last year? Um, I think we've sort of, we've built a foundation now. I mean, it was pretty depressing last year uh, and maybe we're just getting used to it. But I think really the fundamentals are the companies are bringing down their costs. They're starting to deliver better against their targets. You know, central banks bought more gold than they have in um, other than one year in the last yeah. 50. So, I mean, the fundamentals are all lining up beautifully, and I think we've got a great future. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us today, Randall. Nice to be with you. And we'll see you at PDAC. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. So, thanks for watching our continued coverage here from Goldstock Analysts. They will have more for you. In the meantime, you can stay tuned to Kitco.com. Thanks for watching.